The distance between these two locations is 3 kilometers. The original plan the client came up with the wireless bridges. We received a tough case from your guy. He needs to install several IP cameras inside and outside of this warehouse. But the network video recorder will be placed in the office. The distance between the office and the warehouse is about 3 kilometers. It is a long run network. He needs to establish the network connection to bring all these IP cameras to the network video recorder in the office. He faced another challenge. Two cameras has the usual long run between the setup spot and the warehouse. It is about 300 meters. He needs to send the power and data to these two cameras. How to deal with the long run network and the long run PoE on both ends? Now let's move to the demonstration board and find a proper solution for this case. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You will receive the notification once we release a new video. Let's pretend this is the setup in the office. We have a network video recorder and a main switch. The network video recorder is attached to the network port on this network switch. This is the PoE switch in the warehouse. The distance between these two locations is 3 kilometers. The original plan the client came up with the wireless bridges. He plans to set up one pair of wireless bridges at both ends to establish the wireless connectivity. But there's a building between these two locations. The major rule to use the wireless bridges is to have the clean site. If there's obstacles such as trees or the building blocking the transmission or receiving, it's not going to work well. Then he tries to look for the back-to-back -back solution. He wants to put another pair of the wireless bridges on the top of the building to walk the two wireless bridges on both sides. But he doesn't have the access to the building. The owner doesn't want them to put any wireless bridges on the top of this building not even say how to power these two wireless bridges. Now we have to go back to the traditional solution by using the cable. With this long distance, 3 km, the fiber optic cable is the last option. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a fiber optic cable to connect the main switch in the office and the PoE switch in the warehouse. First, let's take a look at the fiber optic cable. I'm using this factory pre-made fiber optic cable the connector is being built in the factory with the pulling eyes. We can either pull this cable over the conduits or put the cable overhead. Let me put this cable on the wall. To use the fiber optic cable, we need the media converters on both ends. The media converter will convert the optical signal to the electrical signal or vice versa. Now let's take a close look at the main switch. This main switch has 8 Ethernet port and 8 SFP slot. We are familiar with the Ethernet port. The network video recorder is attached to one of the Ethernet port. The SFP slot we can consider is the media converter. There are multiple media converters built into this switch. But this SFP slot is empty. We cannot connect the fiber optic cable to this SFP slot directory. We need one more device called SFP transceiver. Now let me put on this SFP transceiver and connect one of the cable to this SFP transceiver. Let me also power up the switch. I want to take a few seconds to explain the SAP transceiver. Since this SAP transceiver will determine what kind of fiber optic cable you can use and which type of connector you can use. You can either use the single mode or multi mode, but with this distance, 3 km, you only can choose the single mode fiber optic cables, since the multi mode fiber optic cable is limited to 550 meters. There's LC type, SC type, and ST type. If you have picked the SAP transceiver, then you need to choose the correct fiber optic cable to work with your SAP transceiver. There's one more parameter people always ignore is about the speed. Unlike the Ethernet port, user is backward compatible. 
100 megabit speed device what with the 1000 megabit port right but that's not the case for the SAP transceiver the speed of the SAP transceiver must match the speed on this device for example this SAP slot support 1.25 gigabit speed then it doesn't work with the SAP transceiver with 100 megabit per second speed or 10,000 megabits per second speed the speed on this SAP transceiver and this SAP slot must match now the setup is ready in the office let's move to the warehouse this is a POE switch but there's no SAP slot so we need an external media converter to work with the fiber optic cable the media converter has an SAP slot it's also empty we need to install this SAP transceiver just like what we have in the office on the back end we have an ethernet port and the power int first let me connect the fiber optic cable to this SAP transceiver and power up this media converter and use a short patch code to lean this ethernet port to one of the uplink port on this switch now we have used the fiber optic cable to connect the main switch in the office and the PoE switch in the warehouse we just conquered one challenge now let's deal with the long run PoE in the warehouse remember we have two cameras with up to 300 meters long run if you read the design guide of the PoE network, it specifies the maximum distance between the PoE switch and the edge device is 100 meters. Now we need to push the PoE networks three times longer than the standard PoE. There's two factors we need to deal with, the power and the data. The data is simple since it's the signal. You just can place the extender in 100 meters before the signal starts dropping if it boosts up the signal and give you another 100 meters then we put the second extender totally we got 300 meters but the power is a little bit tricky the power is the energy we cannot repeat the power there's still two methods allow us to make the powers run longer the first method is to increase the voltage output from the PoE switch we can input, increase the voltage from DC 48 volt to DC 54 volt to adapt to more power loss during the long run the second method is to implement the latest PoE standard PoE++ the PoE and PoE++ just took half of the three pairs in this cable to send the power and the latest PoE standard will took all the four twist pairs to send the power this is an A port long range PoE switch which has implemented all the principles we just mentioned there's a long range chipset built into this switch it can push the data up to 500 meters we don't need to place the extender in the middle of the cables it also implements the PoE++ to take all the four twist pairs to send the power now let me connect these 300 meter cables to one of the PoE ports and go to the cameras and find the second end of the cable we need to add the PoE extender to this setup I will explain why we need this PoE extender let's make the connection and use a short patch code to lean this PoE extender to our camera this is the waterproof version in the practical setup user we need to put this grant and use the tool to fasten the ground to keep the water out all right why we need this PoE standard even I mentioned that PoE switch can push the data up to 500 meters right since this camera is just a regular camera it cannot push the signal back to reach this PoE switch and this PoE standard will take the signal from this camera and send back to this PoE switch because there's also a long run chipset built into this PoE standard you also answer one question is there any compatibility issues the answer is negative since the long run PoE switch will work with this PoE standard then from the camera's perspective it's just a standard TCP IP network 
Well, now we can see the live feed from the camera. I'm waving my hand. This is the setup that we use the fiber optic cable to connect the main switch in the office and to the PoE switch in the warehouse. I use this long range PoE network to power this camera. But I want to, before we end this video, I also want to do one thing to replace this PoE switch. Since we got a new version, which come with the SAP slot. We no longer need this external media converter. Now let's swap the switch. Let me get the power from the old switch and connect to this new switch. And connect the cable to one of the PoE port. I'm going to remove the fiber optic cable from this external media converter. We still need this SAP transceiver. This is just the SAP slot. It is empty. And let's connect the fiber optic cable to this SAP transceiver. So that will be it. We are seeing the live feed again. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please leave a message in the comment section below.